Here's Brody Brazil. As it relates to aircraft fuel, there's pretty much only two ways to describe how much you have, either in pounds or in gallons. But why would we do it like this? Why are there two different measurements? Why can general aviation pilots pretty much only live in the gallons world? And jet and airline pilots, they have to exclusively be in the pounds side of things. Well, for the most part, I'll explain. Why do we do it like this? That's the whole point and purpose of this video. So here's the main dilemma, the main difference. Aircraft engines, they only know one thing, mass. That's how they burn fuel in mass or in pounds. So that's the one measurement. But tanks, right, how much fuel an aircraft can hold, they only know one thing, and that's different. Volume, how much quantity as it relates to gallons. So here is the dilemma we have, mass versus volume, pounds versus gallons. Some of these things change while others don't, and that's what we'll dive into later in this presentation here. So here's more to the dilemma. Fuel weight is a better indication of potential energy to the aircraft potential energy that's available, right? So uh, duration, endurance, performance, all of that, what an engine can do for the airplane is measured better in terms of weight, in terms of mass, in terms of pounds, right? So that's, that's a big part of this dilemma. The volume side of it is not as critical. It's not as telling. It's probably the best way to put it. Fuel, though, it expands with temperature, Obviously, the tanks don't change size. And this is best described and best maybe understood as an example on a hot day that actually starts off as a cool morning, right? It's 7 a.m. The fuel truck comes by. Sure, top me off all the way to the top. I'm, I'm taking a long flight today. But let's say that you don't actually depart until around noon. And from 7 a.m. till noon, I don't know why you'd be at the airport that long hanging out, uh, but the temperature rises, let's say, 30 degrees and your airplane is out in the sun. So obviously that fuel is rising in temperature, the wings in general, everything rising in temperature. Well, with that temperature rise comes fuel expansion. And so the tanks can't hold that much fuel anymore. You'll see the fuel dripping out of the vent, which I will show you that in just a second too. But what you need to understand here is that hot days, there's just less energy available because that fuel is going to expand the mass might stay the same, but the volume is going to increase, and that, that tank can only hold so much as it relates to volume. So here is that, that fuel vent. Now, it's, it's confused a lot of times with the fact, like on a Cessna, the fuel cap has um, like a vent built in on the top, but that's for suction. That's so air can get in to replace the fuel that has been used so that you don't get like a vacuum effect in the fuel tank. That's to let air in. This is on the bottom of the wing. This is to let excess fuel out so that the tanks don't get overfilled, right? When you get that heating over the course of a day, a, a lot of times when I was instructing and I'd be with a, a relatively new pilot, we would see this situation middle of the day, afternoon, summertime, whatever it was. And I'd say, is that a bad thing that fuel right now is dripping out of our airplane. And sometimes you would see the reaction of the student like, I mean, that that doesn't seem like the best thing. That can't be the greatest thing. But then you explain why it's happening, how that is designed to happen just like that to obviously you know protect the aircraft, its wing structure and its fuel tank integrity. Then obviously it seems like the best thing. But we've all seen that before, fuel slowly dripping out of that vent. So volume versus mass here continued. Uh, gallons per hour. Why did I say that, you know, uh, gallons was just fine for most general aviation pilots? Because that's accurate enough for piston aircraft. The tanks aren't as big. The, the, uh, the fuel, the aircraft fuel, the 100 low lead, it does not expand as much as Jet A does versus what jet aircraft and airline pilots have to deal with. Jet A, slightly more susceptible to expansion plus much larger scale of volume and tanks. So when you talk about expansion, uh, you know, if it's a gallon or so or two in a piston aircraft, it's obviously going to be a much greater difference and a little bit more expansion in something like an airliner or any type of jet powered aircraft at 15 degrees Celsius. So a relatively cool day, but but not cold by any means. Here's the weight of Avgas. Jet A and water. Avgas checking in at about six pounds per gallon. Jet A heavier than that. 
And water at 8.3 pounds per gallon, that's why you sump out your, your fuel tanks because water over the course of an evening or a longer period of time, if there is water in the tanks, that's why the sumps are at the bottom there because the fuel is going to sink to the bottom. Fuel quantity in jet, air, jet aircraft is always expressed in pounds. And that's not just how many pounds do we have on board with the fuel gauges, but also fuel flow, like pounds per hour, how much are we burning, and also fuel used, how, much, how many pounds have we used in this flight. So just so you know, pounds across the board. Um, but there's one problem here. If you're ordering fuel and you're doing all your flight planning as it relates to pounds, there's just one problem. Ordering fuel still only comes in gallons. You don't tell the fuel truck, uh, give me 5,000 pounds. You need to tell them a quantity as it relates to gallons because it's it's hard for the fuel truck to measure any other way, right? You've seen it on their little dial on the side of the truck when they're filling you up. That thing's moving obviously fast and you're thinking about how much money it's <laughs> it's relating to, but it's hard for the fuel truck to measure any other way. So when you want to go pounds to gallons, uh, there's one way, simple math. You take the needed pounds and you divide by 6.7. Remember, that's why I told you the weight of Avgas, for example, versus Jet A. Now, this is Jet A at 6.7. So I want to be clear, this is not Avgas, but take the needed pounds and divide by 6.7. That'll get you to the amount you're looking for. Another way to go from pounds to gallons here is to drop the zero and then add 50%. Think about that for a second. Drop the zero and add 50%. So 4,000 pounds, if that's what you needed to complete your flight, hypothetically, of Jet A. So take off a zero, so from 4,000 to 400, and then add 50% of that. 400 plus 50% of that is 200, so 600 total gallons will equate to about 4,000 pounds. Now, I'm saying this as a rule of thumb. Obviously, I recommend you do the precise math. I think we all prefer it that way. So pounds versus gallons of fuel, hopefully that explained why, why we do it like this in aviation. Uh, some pilots will hear, Wait, why, are we, why would you be talking about pounds of fuel uh, versus others who would say, yeah, gallons means nothing to me right now in my bigger aircraft. Pounds versus gallons, two totally different things, but necessary for, as you can see, important reasons. Thanks for being here on the channel. Don't forget to subscribe. I've got lots more great content coming out soon. Plus, if this video helped you out, consider giving it a thumbs up. That would greatly help me out. <laughs>